Yep. Okay. Let me see a little pop up. Uh, welcome to the Linden Conservation Commission. Today is uh, July, June 8th, 2023. Uh, we, my name is uh, Carl Hummel. I'm the chair. I'll ask the other members of the committee to introduce the commission to introduce themselves. Bob <laughs> Sweet. Well, Susan Cahillan, co chair. Mike Amandola. Damon. Damon Tinio. Damon is on remote. Uh, missing are Tim McCarty, who expressed his regrets, and Peter Coffin, who has been radio silent for a month. He hasn't been responding to any of my emails. So that's going to be, we'll talk about that later. Uh, the, uh, I, will put, I will go over correspondence before our 715 public hearing start. Um, next Tuesday, uh, the town engineering company that has been doing all of the foundation work is uh, on the town on the town hall campus will be done a sidewalk for interested members of the community uh, to go over how they have built in stormwater management and other key technologies. So I, I've been noticing their progress the last month, so they'll have something here. Pretty nice to look at uh, planting and gardening. So, uh, we have uh, correspondence from John Leonard, uh, the siltation fence and other pay bill barriers were put in place last Friday for 40, 45, 49 in Upstitch Road. Uh, they expect to be doing tree removal tomorrow. They haven't done it already today. So if members of the committee who are interested in going out and doing a walkthrough or not having to refuse themselves from projects involving Kevin Meenart are invited to go take a look. What is that? Is it ready? It, it was ready last Friday. I sent that an email with that kind of text and they expect to be doing tree work, starting tree work tomorrow. Is that the one with the DP today? Um, yeah, it's the one up on the hill. It's not a new project. If I tell you, I'm looking. <laughs> or you can just go on out, uh, contact, look in your email, and give John Dean Hart a call. His phone number is in the office. It's actually We have uh, a letter from to us and the Board of Selectmen from Leander Boda. Boda is expressing interest in serving. Conservation Commission, the letter that she sent so over there follows in your email. Uh, she wasn't able to make tonight's meeting because she's out of town. She's not in two weeks because it's her anniversary. She's something fun with her family. So, uh, we will see uh, about interviewing her and getting the back to the board of select. Uh, if you know anyone else who's interested in coming up and being on this side of the table and having them listen to the ramble, participate in all the questioning. Uh, the process is defined on the town website. The process starts by using email to the right person in town government uh, to the, and, and to the board of select and the process takes place. The last correspondence, not the last, that's correspondence from Alexandria Ichande, who is a Person from Ass Fisheries and Wildlife. She was asking about a possible violation at 27 Pleasant, 27 Pleasant Street. Uh, she got a drive uh, by and Tim McCarty contacted the owner. He was not constructing the road, he was just turning back and this is the North Trail. Oh, here's Steve. Great. Uh, so we gave back the information to Alex Dale. Uh, there's no, so there doesn't seem to be any further action. I start by the information. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the feedback we gave to the officers. Things that came in since I prepared the agenda. Again, I got a voicemail from someone looking to buy property in Lake Bitmo, that's whether it was. My response was I left her a voicemail saying 
it's a lake that is not fed by a large number of streams, so it doesn't have seasonal flooding. Um, sometimes a beaver dam will cause flooding, but then we go not the beaver dam. I believe it's fed yeah. by spring. It's fed right. it's by spring, yeah. And I referred her to the uh, Lake Nipmuc Association website and also Dan Byer, the sea's charging uh, beach. And he's very concerned about the water level. She has any issues. I would think they would uh, floodplain is sharp, right? You're either in the floodplain or not. I don't know. That's a, another, we don't need to pay that. Yeah. Um, the last one is when I went to check the mailbox. Well, this morning we have a postal mail request by the planning for a certificate of compliance for six on a six C West Hill Road and so neighborhood. So we have to see how I can Susan process that in communicating with them to get to get their uh, CSC. We uh, did a site visit and we wanted to issue the certificate of compliance back in 2021. Now they uh, a letter from the Professional engineer says even if the work has been completed in accordance with the conditions for the conditions to submit it. We have the time. Allentown finances. Um, we had a, uh, someone asked, we have Compound pays for beaver trapping, and someone who did that work for us earlier this spring uh, was asking about getting paid. I checked in with the uh, people in the office downstairs. They actually had the check in the envelope this morning that was going out to the mail. The other bill that we have that was outstanding for um, newspaper ads, uh, that was being taken care of as well. So, still. It'd be helpful if we had someone who would um, volunteer and pay more attention to finances. Uh, Did we ever clear up with the MACC, like a membership fees? Um, or is that I, I don't know whether we are members or not. Susan, did you find out whether they let you no. try to do something? Because I'm sure we need to pay an annual membership fee. I'll, I'll try to follow up on that. Okay. Um, next item. New status hiring innovation admin. Um, we have no HR person since Shelly just left. Uh, Kim is the impression I get from email that I'm seeing that Kim has written is that there is a position posted for a health agent and the conservation agent or a conservation clerk work would be done as part of that. Be reaching out to him on Monday. Uh, trying to get clarification as to what the status of that is and um, what the timeline would be for hiring if that would happen before we hire or replace the kind of administrator. Am I just imagining conversation? Were we going to be sharing a position with some other town? That, that is a possibility, possibility that I have been told the email might happen all. Which town was it? Blackstone or Buxbridge? No, it was Tuxford. It was Upton. No, Upton. I, no I don't. I, I think it was uh, Douglas. But again, yeah. it, nothing. Some, nothing ever has comes of, comes of any of this. Yeah. As of right now, there's nothing. I think. Right? If, if if someone can check your email, that's my external memory. I just want to go just distract just distract me. It's now, hmm, that says 7 11. That says, I think the selectmen and, and, the, and some other people are more, more concerned on getting rid of people than they are on finding people. Um, well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I will be checking with the selectmen. Uh, we have one interested candidate for, for filling the slot. I put in my name to have my term renewed. Damon will not be renewed this term. And so we will see who's, uh, whose terms are up. Mine and Damon's. And I submitted a letter to the appropriate people in the selection saying I'm interested in. 
I assume that I have reappointed and I would continue to be chair if everyone's interested in stepping back and letting me continue to do this. Okay. I assume. So, so uh, Mike, Mike, you're going to be the, I was close behind you, but I'm, I'm out now. So you're definitely the longest runner here. Yep. I think they call out the stadium. 22 years was just long enough for me, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's going on uh, 35 or 36. I think. Okay. And I've enjoyed every second. I was too, buddy. I was too. Next thing I can cover in two minutes before 715. Um, in order to get the late Nick Hawk yearly weed treatment, one of the pieces of paper we need to get finished is the paper documentation authorizing the treatment of the late, which is a specific DEP number. Uh, I've worked with uh, uh, water and wetlands on what paperwork they need, and when you go signing things at the end of the evening, it's over there. See about, and then Susan gets to take all of the sign papers and make sure that uh, they are comfortable working on scheduling the time that they invite to do the way Okay. It's now 7.15 of the public hearings. Uh, I don't see Fred. Or anyone, is there anyone else from um, Red Lake? I'm not sure whether we're expecting to see another meeting on 26 Ralston Farm Drive or whether we have, we have left that many times. So it's done seen here. I assume don't, don't need to do any action. Next open hearing is for 23 Gate Road, uh, water checked, uh, wait, the warehouse. Uh, I spoken with Connor uh, this morning and they are not going to be making a presentation at this meeting. We will be discussing it uh, another matter. The timetable that we are looking at for this is Blue Water met with the planning board Monday night and they are still working out the final details of the traffic plan, the sound plan, and whatnot. They, Expect to get that completed uh, in two weeks, one day to two weeks. Um, I Connor asked if we would take any action on voting on their uh, paperwork, and I said no. We're going to wait until after uh, the planning board makes things official, and the reason is because until the planning board makes their final vote. The purchase, sorry, the maintenance and operation plan is not final. When the planning board votes, then we would, on the committee, be able to review the maintenance and operation plan, specifically the parts we're concerned about with storm water management and checking the filters underground. Um, I sent out, I have email from the planning board. Dylan saying, here is the link where that actually is. I encourage Susan and other members of the board to look at that and members of the public with the goal of just the stormwater plans and the filtering plans. If we are not comfortable with those or if we want any changes, I would like to have them brought to the water's attention in the next week. My goal is that if the planning board signs off, I will be looking to see if the Conservation Commission would then do then do our sign off four days later, maybe on Thursday. Uh, that's contingent on a number of things. And so now we're going to start the discussion on what that's contingent on. One of them is our review of the maintenance and operation plan. The other one is Susan working with their existing peer reviewer on um, uh, The, the questions about runoffs. Susan, do you want to talk about the current state of your discussion on things? Did you check in with, with your spouse on? Oh, oh, um, yes. He, um, the only thing he'd asked, uh, gave me advice on um, if there was any fluid water separators. And um, that's what I'm not going to do. Is that I could actually get to the off. So I started looking at the whole plan and I realized 
Wait, I'm only supposed to look at Comic-Cons. <laughs> but I did find something um, interesting for them. Oh. Okay. They, read, they have some new regulations about um, as far as EJ populations, and there is an EJ population. But it's within a mile. It's also trigger, triggers from asthma in schools, and that's just some within a mile. So I, you know, I need to get in touch with them. Is that Milford or something there? Uh, Bellamy. Bellamy. That's, that's the, 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 the regulations for January. Yeah. Yeah. Does that be considered statute? I'll look that up. I would think that's an opening. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I think it might be listed. Okay. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? <laughs> I didn't see it listed, but I'll look again. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Kyle. Yep. Yeah, so, just from a planning board point, just so you guys got to kind of know what's going on. I know you were at the meeting, but there's been stuff that's been going on, emails back since the last few days here. Um, I think there's a decision being written as we speak and not sure what the, the vote's going to be, but there will be a vote at the next meeting. And I mean, if there was any peer reviews that were that were wanted to be done about the little bit of, I mean, they've moved everything out of the wetland other than a very minimal area out of the buffer zone. Does everybody know that? Yeah, I, yes. read, that e I read that email this morning. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so they moved a lot of, of, of the majority of that area is out of the even out of the buffer. So um, Jeff Walsh did a, a period, um, you know, the stormwater. He approved all that stuff. Um, if, if there was something that was going to be addressed, it should have been addressed months ago, not hmm. you know, not a week before the the the, the, the next the final meeting. Thing is, from what I read, they're they're not going to put a. a wall up anymore they're just going to do a earthen banking no they're doing they're doing a wall they just moved it out of the they just moved it out of the uh they just but they just basically moved the riprap swale that was going down in the outflow out of the wetland out of the buffer i think there's like they're under the i think i don't know the exact number but what is it they're 38 under, i think the square footage that you 30, need to be for real estate like 3500 or something yeah, thirty nine twenty eight. So I mean, all this stuff, they they you know got out of that area, so there was less of an impact for what any concerns of the board. Um, and like I said, this the the town engineer has gone through this thing with a fine tooth comb, and that's why they that's why we have stormwater management now, so that we make sure that they filter clean everything. As best as they can before it, you know, is discharged into a wetland or wherever it's discharged, discharged to. Yeah, that's that's why I'm focusing on what the final maintenance and operation plan is going to be, because that will say very specifically how they are going to filter stormwater during week to week operations, as well as their their maintenance on how many every decade or so digging up. Old filters and putting in new ones. Right. And I think the uh, handbook, you, we have a copy of the handbook somewhere. You, you, Chairman Hommel, you have a copy. Blue Water's on tonight. Josh Garfano with Blue Water's on. Okay, for hey, yes, hey, the, Damon. The link was sent. Uh, Dylan sent me the link and it's been shared uh, in the ConCom mail and uh, I can make it available on the public websites. Uh, yep. Uh, that 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 O and M manual shouldn't change unless something at the planning board level changes at this point. It should be up to date as of the yeah. plans presented on Tuesday night. Um, yes. which I think what I think Mr. Tinio was referencing um, the updated plans that remove the ripwrap swale um, yep. and a couple but, other small, very minor details. But that plan essentially is reflective of what the O and M maintenance manual should say at this point. So yes, as I got pointed out to me. At when, I, when I asked at the meeting Monday, no, it's not official until there's an actual vote. The, the planning board can't <laughs> that until they approve the whole thing. So that's yep. what, what the reasons why I'm, we should we should examine it and assume that it's final. But and, and then it turns out there are modifications made at the Monday night planning board meeting to take that into account. Yeah, uh, and to reiterate, so Mr. Yeah. Yeah, Was there a, Sorry, go ahead. 
Um, are you guys going to tell uh, tie into the pump and water, or are you still doing the wells? Uh, I'm sorry, you guys broke up a little with the mic. What what was the question? One more time, something about wells. I heard the end of it. Oh, um, are you guys? Did you guys get the time and um, go ahead for Hopedale Water? Only only for fire suppression. Still hasn't changed. We have the four, we have the four wells drilled for domestic water service, um, and three of the wells are being utilized for domestic water service through the DEP permit. Oh, how deep are those? How deep did the wells get drilled? Oh, I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to look back. We did those wells quite a long time ago. Um, if I recall, they're up in the northwest part of the parcel. It's not here. It's, it's not here. It, it, it's not near any of the disturbed areas. When we reviewed the plans, they were going to be having the usual siltation tents. Hay bales around. I'm interested in knowing how deep those are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could we could get you that in two seconds tomorrow. I just need to pull up the drillers logs to get the the depth right. or the D or the DEP permit. I think references how deep they were drilled. Okay, if you can work, if you can work with Connor to mail that to the CONCOM email and I'll distribute it to the to the rest of the list. Yep, well depth, no problem. Okay, um, so Susan, anything further that your investigations or your what you're still investigating? Yeah, I'm just going through the, I'm still going through the stormwater plan. Okay. Uh, anyone? Uh, um, yeah, that was like one of the questions I have. Is there an oil water separator associated with those, um, that system? That would be in the filters underground? It would be in the home for filters. And the same would be below. I was going to ask him. Yeah, that's correct. You, yeah. you would think. You want the oil and water yes. separated out of the water before it goes down. Mm -hmm. the yeah. More like a set up. Set up. Well, does it flow to me? But I have it on the computer. I want to make sure you know what I'm looking at. And was that shown in the plans that Blue Water showed us a couple months ago? That kind of detail. And I think it was set a little bit later when he was asking about the good detail. Okay. All right, so uh, Josh, is that another thing that you could research and, and send? Yeah, I just want to be clear. Is the question, are we providing oil water separation separators? Mm -hmm. above, right. above the in-ground filters. Above the in-ground filters. OK, I will confirm with the pre. Well, let's let's start with. Are there oil separators in, in with the, the design? And if they are, where are they going to be in the system? Okay, we'll get you a quick. Uh, we'll get you guys a write up on on what we have as it relates to oil water separators. Not a problem. Yep. If you can reference a a, a, a the page number of of the plans that we have, or if there's an updated set of plans, uh, send that as well, and then I'll put that on on our Concom SharePoint site for members to review. Sounds good. Okay, uh, is there anyone in the audience who wants to speak further on the blue water post? Okay, anyone on the call interested in talking about this? Okay, uh, so we will. So, Kyle, so Kyle, I just yeah. trying to just so I have a little bit of information for plan and board if it's asked. So these little questions that we just asked that you, those are all the thing that you need blue water to give you answers to, right? Those are the two questions that have been identified. Uh, so that's all, there's nothing at the next meeting, they're not gonna ask for something else. Oh, um, I'm gonna email, I'll email Connor directly if I, because I have a couple of minor ones. Okay, I'm gonna give you a hard deadline. So yeah, can we just, can we just get those to us so that we could try to push towards, I think everybody's getting at the same thing that we've come to this meeting a number of times we'd like to try to wrap up. So we're happy to answer whatever you got. Just be nice to get it put together in one spot and sent over Connor and I, and as always, we'll get you back the answers. Yeah. Yep, that's great. Okay, um, so Susan, I'm committing you to a hard deadline. Well, months. if my paying job is get life short, which not, I'm to last life. Okay. So much I can do. 
All right. So anything else before we close the public hearings? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Josh, for, for showing up and helping to participate in the discussion. My pleasure. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Board. Thank you, Mr. Tinio. Appreciate your time this evening. Okay. Uh, we'll now move to the additional topics that are not public hearings. Uh, we'll start with the usual opportunity. Are we closing that? Let me interrupt. Are we oh, closing? sorry. We're, we're, we're continuing. Sorry, we're not closing it. We're continuing it until the public Sorry. Yep, you're right. We're not, we can't close it until we come up with the right paperwork. Uh, so I guess in that sense, I'll entertain a motion to continue till 622. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Dave and I. Okay, passes unanimous. And again, guys, you know there's a planning board meeting on the 20th, uh, so that you should have at least know what what planning board's um, path is when you have the next meeting on the 22nd. Yes, uh, my, my expectation is that I will zoom into it or teams into it the way I did this week, and then you and I would be able to let the rest of the CONCOM know if there are any issues that we need to uh, deal with. And I'd also reach out to Blue Water during that week uh, to make sure that our next meeting, hopefully the last one with regards to this project is, is productive. Sounds good. Mr. Chairman, on, on that note right there, I would like to just discuss a little bit and uh, make a few statements that um, it's unfortunate that with one of our members, we're losing one of our members that also serves on planning, which is a valuable asset to this committee. Have you as chairman given any thought about how we're going to continue to be informed by the planning board, what's happening so that we um, can work together with them? Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Carl, I mean, yeah. I, I know I'm not going to be on the board anymore, but I am more than happy to be. Uh, any inf give any information that I can to you guys. All I am is a phone call away, and I will do yeah. what I can to the same as I do now. I mean, just because the dirty thirty wants me off doesn't mean that I don't want to help out. Still be a part of the, um, you know, the conservation and protect our wetlands and protect our our town. Okay, thank you. Um, after we reconstitute with our new membership and elect a new chair, whether it's me or someone else who steps forward, uh, we can then discuss whether we want to have someone officially or unofficially liaison and attending the planning board meetings. Well, I think, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I think Bob, that's Bob, Bob has already volunteered uh, by my first thing is I want to do this, do the Lake Task Force activity. So we can then think about doing similar things with the other town boards that we are downstream from CBA planning board board of health. That's correct. And, and we'll also have a liaison to the uh, CPA. Do we know if minutes, I'm not so interested in minutes of other meetings, but if the meeting is being picked, how quickly are those available? Because that would be the other thing. You could review the planning board and the comfort of your own home, fast forward to a project. There, there are two answers to that. Dan Byer usually uploads them to YouTube within a week. However, the videos are restored on the town SharePoint site with restricted access. However, all of us, because we are into the town internet, we might we would probably be able to view those if, even if they hadn't been put on YouTube. And if there is one person who is tasked to, or, or volunteers to liaison with another board, they could then get access to that link and see if it is, even if it was ready. Hey, speaking of liaison, whatever happened to the select board liaison that was supposed to attend every meeting? Right there next to you. He's on the screen. He's off the screen. Who is it? 
Jason is on the screen. He's on um, on chip on the uh, website. Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just hanging out to the side. Jason, you're oh, okay. Oh, you're the liaison now, Jay. I'm not the liaison yet. I've I've uh, asked the uh, the chair to put it uh, on our next meeting to, to to talk about making that more official across the boards because Lonnie was checking in with other boards as well, and we need to fill that. Cool. All right. I thought I thought um, my God it was going to be it, but then I never saw him anywhere. So, but that's good. Oh, I'm glad to see. Yeah, I think there. we're gonna awesome. we're gonna try to chat about it soon. Oh, I'd love to. I'd rather see you. That's good. Yep, and this way you can multitask. That's right. You have to do anything with your family. <laughs> okay, uh, so next next one, the standard placeholder 106 Millville Road, an opportunity for uh, any interested parties to discuss the status of the remediation work or enforcement work. I have received no email in the past two weeks. I don't see any here, but no news is good news. So I speak. Our, our I drove by there. I drove by there the other day. I I didn't actually pull down in there, uh, but there is all grass growing up on the top side. Uh, yes. So it's it still pretty, yeah. It's still still. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's even low. I I expect that at some point the the property owner will come to us and ask to have the reinforcement order closed. Uh, we said that would probably happen later in the summer after we were sure that the grass had grown in pretty heavily. It should really be through the season. Yeah, I thought, right. Those are not how it goes, Peter. You got to do a growing season. It should go through a growing season. Yeah, and it's just grass. It's not as if it's plantings, but right, for winter. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, especially something of that magnitude where we had so much issues, so many issues, we should make sure that it. Well, I won't be around, but make sure that it's it looks really good and there's not any area that died or, you know, it turns into, you know, an issue down the road, you know. We would need that enforcement so all of the beans that have to be on the road. We would have a meeting. The owner may say, well, they're there. We could fill them in. They just come back again if they are filled in with very grassy and whatnot, and it's not causing a problem with silvation and wetlands. Maybe they just say there's a community feature. We wait until, yeah, until we actually have another meeting. Uh, it's, it's the usual. If when they ask to be released from it, that's when we would negotiate and whether it would call in with the butters and see if they were satisfied with the status and how they felt about it. Visual aspects of the GC failed. Okay, uh, next action uh, 23 Cape Road, the existing uh, property owner, and dealing with stormwater runoff. Review conditions on site and examine photos from before and after the six month storm. I noticed that the uh, owners of 14 Talbot Drive are here in the audience. Uh, I reached out to them to ask if they noticed any siltation after the heavy storm that we had at the uh, beginning of the month, and they sent in some pictures. And so here is a before picture, and you can see a stake here. And then here's an after picture. Assuming I got that's June 2nd. Yep, that's June 1st, then June 2nd. You can see there's, there's a little bit of, of activity up here. Where, where was that? This is the, the creek between 23 Cape Road on the west side of 23 Cape Road and the east side of, 20, of um, 14 Talbot Drop Farm Drive. So this is these are photos that you took, uh, oh. right? Uh, so that's looking upstream, and that stake is that the property bound, or that's just an arbitrary that's, stake? That's um, uh, about six feet away from one corner of our acres, and from that stake you go up on the day Okay. So where I'm seeing that brown silt at the bottom of a tree, is that their property? It's up top, yeah. That, not, yeah, not on that one so much, but on the other I can't see. You also yeah. can see the water level went up considerably. 
Yeah. And that silt just flows right down onto our actively go. Our it's continuous. Well, it sounds uh, like there's a perched aquifer right between, say, the solar field and the solar field. Is it enough to do separately here? Yeah, well, the other picture shows that, right? Uh, the stone, or maybe it was the pictures they, they sent, but didn't you? Uh, it was up on the web of the detention pond. Well, that's the next thing I'm going to begin okay. to do. We're going to discuss these pictures. So, as a result of these pictures, we had another rain this past weekend, and uh, I asked Damon to go out and uh, he got permission from the current owner to look at the Retaining pond and do an examination of on defas. There we go of the existing site as it is now. And what we are not seeing here is the evidence of the massive silt runoff that we saw prior to the retaining pond being built. So these these, these shots if were you taken. You go back to those. Go back to the. All right. So just go back to that first one that we can see the whole pond just about. Stop there, please. This one? No, the next one back. Shooting uphill. Okay. So, Mike, you were on site with us on that last site walk. So, they tied that whole riprap swale that was running along the bound property line in, into this settling basin. And, and then it has, if you go to the next pay, picture, uh, Carl. That rate, oh, no, back. So when it gets up above there, it gets up any higher than, a little higher than that, it, it has an outflow that takes it off and, and puts it down in next picture. Is there an outflow or it's just a sheet flow coming over the berm? No, it's just an outflow. That's what that little, that, that's what that little, there's a pipe there and then it comes down into here and then this is looking down towards the wetland. So, that, so that where is, would that pipe out fall to? It just goes into the riprap. So all this riprap here, there was a, at the bottom of this riprap where the, there's all new hay bales. All right, that's all brand new hay bales and silt fence. There was a little, little, very little bit of silt right on the other side of that silt fence. You can kind of see it there in the middle. A very, very minor. And then, you know, the water's running down there. So whatever it's doing, I mean, yes, that there's probably cloudy water, um, but I mean, I walked down through there, and there's no way as much silt as that was going there, uh, nowhere near. I mean, like seventy to eighty percent less, you know. So maybe even more than that less. Uh, but I just think it's pick, you know, whatever it's grabbing through that through that wetland there, it's all gravel and everything. I know maybe it's just getting some cloudy water when it's when it's getting you know when we get a lot of rain, uh, but that settling basin was clean. Um, everything coming out of it was clean. Um, it's really it, it, they, I mean it's a nice temporary deal that they got there, um, but they did a lot of they put state hay, hay bales staked them. Um, you know that's all a big whole run of brand new hay bales and so fence right there starting at the wood line. Um, they did a lot of work there. So something that's probably going to be torn out after the if the if this thing goes through for for Cape Road. So um, cloudy water versus silt in the water, I think, are two different animals. But um, I didn't see anywhere near what we saw from at that last site when Mike, Carl, and I were there. Um, Unless it's coming from somewhere different that that we don't know about, but everything is heavily grassed, really high, so I couldn't see anything. But you know what? I didn't look, and I didn't go over this place with a fine tooth comb through the whole property line of the river. Right. My question is: so downstream of the silt fence, I guess that's iron, but that to me is a channel. <laughs> Right. And oh, so yeah, yeah. It there, there was a stream there. or there's enough water collecting to make a channel. And there's a little bit there. And I would say that looks kind of erosive. Right. I don't see any green grass growing. Uh, nope. So uh, it, it's hard to know. Uh, from a picture, but that 
Yeah. Yeah. No, and it was like that the last, the first time we went there. Um, it's it been like that. More <laughs> silk. Going from. I admit it's it gotten better, but. Oh, it definitely got better. Um, they did. I mean, what the word? They slowed down. What they are doing is just slowing down. The water was running down that hill so fast that it was grabbing whatever it could get in its way and taking it with them. So now they've slowed it down considerably. But, you know, you get heavy rain and, you know, that is what, you know, you know, you know what you're going to get. Do you have any questions that you want to ask with Damon about what he was just reporting? No, but I do it now. My speculation is that before this retention pond was put in place, there was a tremendous amount of silt that was down below the siltation fence here in this property area between here and the actual tree. And I think what may be happening now is every successive rainstorm even though there's not a massive flow of water coming down, it's picking up the silt that was deposited in previous months and slowly flushing it into the stream. And that's what uh, we may be seeing during rain events. So I'm glad that you're able to confirm that the investment that was made in the retaining fund is actually uh, reducing the immediate problem. The other uh, conversation we have had with Blue Water, if they buy the property, um, one of the concerns I raised is that their, the plan that they produced for their, how their engineering plan that they showed us a couple of months ago does not incorporate this new activity here. And what I had a verbal discussion with on Connor and what we would confirm at our next and, and, uh, meeting with them is that they will be produced when they go and do construction, if they were to go in and do the whole warehouse project and the ring road around the building, they would be very sure not to leave this, not to demolish this unless they had some other way to keep water from sheeting down into the creek, that they would be very careful to make sure that whatever they did from the current state to their final state with the underground filters and, and retention pumps, they would not destroy this until they had a, another way to keep the rainwater from uh, stormwater from getting into the wetlands. Yeah, I think that's a, and you know what, Carl, we have pictures now that from the from the abutter showing how much there, there was a little bit of, you know, cloudy water, silt, whatever. We don't know exactly what it is, um, but at least we have a, a baseline. So if this project goes through they are if any if they keep I mean, the neighbors are going to be watching it i'm sure we'll like you know with a microscope they'll be under a microscope if they see anything that's you know a problem then they'll have to get on the horn with us or with you guys and it has to be addressed right away with whoever the contractor is that gets the job you know yep and, and but we all agree there's a tremendous amount of water coming and, and Can we all agree on that? Yes. yes. So now, well, that my next question is, where is that water coming from? I have is it bubbling up out of the ground, or is it coming off the field? <laughs> you know where it's coming from, Mike. <laughs> I had that conversation with Connor. We, in, in response to my direct question, the current owner, uh, A, is not interested in finding an answer to that question. I told Connor that if... Blue Water assumed ownership of the property, and they wanted to find out where all of the stormwater was coming from onto their property. That we work with them and the other town agencies to make sure that that happened. Because I believe the surrounding property are contributing to that, and they should uh, take some responsibility also. Yep, and we'll see if Blue Water wants to move in that direction. But, you know, it's funny because if you look to the if you look to the north side of the project or, or the road or anywhere else on that property, there is nothing running down the hill. But if you look in the um, southeast corner, 
and it's a it's coming out of that banking where the land yep. abuts the soccer field. Now, I could not imagine that anybody on that soccer field would ever do anything that's not right. So I, I don't know what's going on there. I guess my major comment would be I I want to review the storm or uh, the stormwater plans, which should go where all the water is coming onto the site, not just from this limited, whether it's upstream on the gas code or whether it's on the side. Someone's got to look at the whole drainage and figure out yeah, get the whole picture. And that should have been in the original drainage study, right? The original graded study from what? The soccer field? No, for this site, I guess. That, no, uh, no, it's uh, coming off, that water is coming off the soccer field. Well, it's I can see from this the, picture it's, it's, it's that they've picture. cut the bank six feet, so I imagine water might pop out if uh, I don't know where the groundwater is. But it's yes, the water's going to move sideways. It's, it's going to be virtual. Not supposed to have water going onto other people's property. The, the, uh, if you dig into the groundwater, it's going to pop out. I'm just slow by what they described, like here in Russian water. Mm -hmm. so the whole it. place would be in groundwater if that was the case, uh, Peter. My property is just sludge Well, the drainage is supposed to plan for all the water that's coming onto the site, from off site as well as what's generated from the grain on top of it. Water plant current. Okay. Yeah. Well, the people that own the land next to it should have their drainage going in the right spot. The, the the existing blue water plan does deal with stormwater coming from other parcels because they want to build the property and and that is where I express to Connor that if they are tired of dealing with other people's stormwater that they can pursue that once they assume ownership. We'll see whether they are interested in doing. Hey, Damon. Go ahead, Susan. Um, do you know the pin for the printer here? I do not. Um, you see, if I what what what? what uh, give me one sec. Uh, if I could, because my other major comment is to this. Yes, they've controlled it a lot, but by evidence of the picture, there is still active silt coming from it. And so, what are we supposed to do? Ignore it and wait until a new owner comes in and is going to fix it? I understand the current owner has gone through a great expense to try to fix it, but evidently the fix ain't well, ninety-five percent. My opinion, when I went out there, we should have brought a shovel with us and gone and seen just how thick the uh, topsoil layer is. My opinion is when that water sheet flows across and enters into the buffer zone. It's washing away. Is this, if there's this much topsoil, it's washing it away and picking up. That's a big sandbank over there. Well, in no area of towns, all gravel and sand. Topsoil and silt shouldn't get through that silt. That should. Can you tell anything from this photo? How, how deep the topsoil is on the other side? No, I would I would say, but when I walked out there, it was obvious that the, some of the silt that I saw was from the scouring of the water. Right, it's not there's a not, not, not the being carried down from through that stone. There's a couple inches of silt on that uh, on that what? I exactly. But there's at least this is where there's a pinch thing. I'm working on it, Susan. There's not there's a very little bit of silt on they're just on the other side of the of the um silt fence. Very, very little bit. That little gray area right in the middle that didn't even make it past four didn't go four feet beyond the beyond the uh silt fence. It's just a little bit there that snuck through between two hay bills. And I think I with that, but it's clear. going down clear. I'm not defending the owner or anybody else. Me neither. But when I look at things, I, we're looking at, at that. Let's deal with what you just said. Let's deal with the whole problem. Where is that water coming from? Yes, we have to deal with that. We also have if to answer mistakes were, If mistakes were made, whether it was five years ago, 10 years ago, or 20 years ago, let's find out 
way I can get everybody involved to deal with. It. I'm just saying that they haven't fixed the problem sufficiently. It's an ongoing erosive problem, right? So whether more hay bales need to be put up, I don't know. Uh, tell me what the fix is. Certainly not putting more hay bales up, but it's controlling good. the water. You got to control the water. It's as simple as that. So have they controlled the water? Right there they have. Then why is there still silt uh, there? They well, what they, some well I, was saying, I believe that's shallow because there's so much water coming. So that to me is telling me there's a lot of water coming from somewhere. So there should be found out. Here, 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 I'll repeat my answer to the question. Because of previous rain events before this basin was put in place, there is a tremendous amount of stuff that was washed into the area not here, but the area. That's correct. Very close out, outside of the grass area into the un, un, into the, the, the grassy wetlands area here. So there's like six months worth of silt like piled up three or four inches tall. We're able to go out there and see evidence of it. Six years of roots all over the place. My speculation is that New rain events are just slowly washing the silt down off of here, but it's not new silt coming from uh, further uphill in the, the developed parts of 23 Cape Road. Instead, it's just doing a natural cleansing of the excessive silt that's been put in for previous rain events. That, that, and you're exactly right, Kyle. That's, that's what's going on because there's nothing coming down since they did all this work. Like I said, if, there, if there's a friggin' shovel full sitting on the other side of that silt fence, um, yes, I don't know. That would be for the lawyers, of course, to decide. But it's also for this board to say, hey, okay, who fixed somebody's got right. So, what I'm saying is, let's do some investigating and not just pick on one spot. Let's get everybody involved out there. But the owner doesn't want to do that. So, well, we like you just said, like, to like to that form? Uh, again, I'm not sure if that's in our jurisdiction to do that. We probably could. That would take a vote of the board. I'm not. I'm not against that idea. We don't have to rely on on the owner that's trying to fix. His right. problem that's coming across his land and to put the put the bill or find out the problem for everything. But it's plain to me to see there's a lot of water coming onto that property. And that guy's being held responsible for it. And I agree, he's doing everything he can to try and make it better. Right. So now it's to, 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 answer, it's all. to answer your question, another possible solution would be to go into the buffer zone. And dig up the excessive amount of silt that was in there. But I think that's worse than actually just letting the silt actually dissolve away and mixed up with that. I, I really think that once, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to, I don't want to keep on bringing more cloudy water slash silty water to the, to the river, but I would probably say that we're going to see this cloudiness uh, slow down at the next two or three rain events because what they did there, I think, not, not, I'm just not saying money-wise, they did a really nice job. And the water that was in that settling basin, you could probably drink. It was clean. There is not any silt in the bottom of that. It's clean. It's holding its, the water, doing its job. Letting it into the leach into the ground slowly, which it was doing at the outflow of that. They must have a perforated sump on the uh, corner there. That's a perforated sump there. So it's slowly going into that and draining into the another riprap swale and down into the into the buffer zone. I mean, it, it's a really nice job. Um, they spent a lot of money doing it, but it's not about the money. It's just that. Damon, is that a pinhole on top of that uh, sump? It's just, it looks a pipe like sump. It's, just a, it's just a cover on top of a sump so that they, got, they have to, if, God forbid, they had to clean it out. They can. 
Okay. You know, but that whole basin is there's not any silt in the bottom of that basin at all. So anything coming from upstream during that rain going in there, we're going in clean and coming out clean. What about on the back side? I see that, you know, the riprap stops and then you got, uh, you know, raw dirt. Could that be washing down and in? I, you couldn't, it there wasn't going. It, there's no evidence of that anywhere on the um, down there, beyond it because it goes from it goes from a little bit of dirt there where they did the work and then it goes all grass like hay grass you know probably a foot tall and then it goes into the buffer zone you know other than the riprap swale that's going down in there well i'd like to conclude discussion on this matter is anyone on the committee interested in proposing a request that we do anything further than just monitor the situation. I think we monitor it, keep an eye on it. Yes. Again, looking at that picture, there's no doubt about it, that water is clear. Yep. Should we talk to town council and find out what our rights are as a conservation board to contact the other folks and say, there's a problem? That's not a bad idea. Should uh, petition the board for so that. I to figure out where all this water is coming from. We we have to stop it from coming in. We could petition the board of select to allow us to talk to town council so that we know. Okay, can you what express that as a motion? When the two of you express I that second it. I, I vote that we we motion. I make a motion that we have the selectmen or or grant the selectmen grant us permission to speak with town council in order to get a clearer understanding of what our rights are to solve the problem going on in 23 Cape Road. Okay, is there a second? Second. What is your discussion? I call What? Can I go there with Michelle? Uh, okay. We do another site visit and get permission from the owner. Then sure, bring shovel. <laughs> uh, no further discussion. All in that. favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, we opposed. Well, actually, we passes. Okay. So uh, I will add that as an action on the Somebody opposed that? No. No, no one, no one opposed it. Okay, thank you. But if you were correct, Cal, by Robert's rules of law, when you take a vote, you ask for the A's, then you ask for the A's, right. whether or not you believe it's a unanimous decision. Well, if I don't hear any A's, it's unanimous. At least I can claim that. Which I believe you officially got that site. Okay. According to Robert's rules. I'll have to go take a look at the Toastmasters website and see what they say about the meeting. Uh, Is that what these town meetings are based upon? The, our town meeting is based on town meeting. Oh. Town, town, meeting. Town, meeting. town meeting doesn't run under Robert's rules because it, Robert's rules allows an a an antagonist to tie things up in the dots. And so there are specific things in town meeting time to prevent bad actors from delaying the action. You can Google that to see if it's I have. Oh. I bought the book years ago. Okay. So I. Hey, guys. Yeah. Yep. S Su Susan, uh, th there isn't a pin number there. Lonnie seems, seems to think you just need to hit the hit the copy button. Yeah, I'm just trying to um, send a printed uh, document from through Wi-Fi, but <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, usually, so, you, okay. Yeah, you can okay. Let's see if I can find out why it won't do it through Wi-Fi. Yeah, I can't even find the printer.
Okay, uh, next action. Uh, 101 North Avenue Conservation District. Our last meeting, uh, we voted unanimously to support the Medical Land Trust proposal to uh, co hold the conservation restriction with them on the Vanderslus properties. Uh, I worked with uh, uh, Metacomic people, and this is the letter that uh, we drafted, and this sent it will be included part of the packet. It basically pretty much says what I just said you, you voted on last evening. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's see. Click there. Yep. Now we'll go to uh, the rules have to have a uh, notice of violation regarding construction of the Sean Wall, Stone Wall, and work performed on the protected buffers on the Bill Hit Mark. Here, can you give an update on who asked me to draft a letter for you on company conservation commission letterhead? And I forwarded that to you. Yeah, yeah and I'm send out a letter. And I'm sorry because I wasn't here at the last county conference because I was down in New Jersey. But uh, Mr. Lambert was asked to come. Okay. And it was a certified letter. I guess he chose not to come. Okay, I was I I was I tried to contact you to see if he had sent the letter or not. And I did send the letter. I sent the letter before right. two weeks before a previous week. Okay, do we have a green card or something saying acknowledging the I didn't I didn't get asked for state requested, I got a receipt. So okay. I sent it certified. But uh, I guess I will pursue, but the yeah. Huh? Okay. Um can I delegate to you working with town council and determining what we will now do that someone's willing us off? I mean, uh, ignoring our uh, request. I <laughs> uh, want to repeat that question. I, I can follow up with what town council on the same. We're going to be asking it's likely to go to town council as to what well, we do to someone who doesn't. Well, we, who's we've violated. Uh, I haven't. In the years I've been on the board, I've never had a situation like this where we've asked someone to come in and they have not done so. So I don't know what the protocol is and how we drive them in kicking and screaming or what the next step is. We do send the letter to DEP saying that as a conservation commission. I, um, I, like I said, it's the same process. I, no, that's not. That's oh, not the, what? Yeah. Okay. No, that's coming back to me because I had to go on to DEP as to there is no formal way for asking them to come in. So we did the good thing by sending them a certified letter, notifying them that we think that there's a problem. I think the next line is uh, you can send them a fine. You can ask a take a direction. You can send them a, an enforcement order. Say you stop. take it's down, it's take it's down it's the wall. And you send an enforcement order. The order. thing is, the work's already been done, so it's, it's not a stop work order. Well, that's fine. Yeah. It's my so decision get, the pond to, ha to have them come in. If they don't respond to that, again, they're, they're, there's a time to make the call. But we've got to make it official. We've got to issue and enforce it. Hey, does, does, um, does, does there a way to find out if he was if he signed the, the certified letter? I don't think you have to sign for a certified letter, but I don't know. I uh, will. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. That's why they're okay, well, certified. So you know they got it. I guess I have the receipt. I can track to see whether oh, you, you, uh, you, you know, when they come in here and say, hey, it's a notice been notified, a certified goes to all of us. Right. But that's certified receipt them. requested. I sent a certified and didn't pay the extra 10 bucks because it was out of my pocket. But in any event, so uh the receipt? I got the receipt. So yeah, you turn it in so you yes, have that's right. And there's forms to fill <laughs> that up. Well, just uh, just a little, I'm not sticking up for anybody, but the guy lives in Florida half the year and he lives here sometime of the year. So I'm just why I'm asking. Did the letter get signed or is it still sitting at the post office? I will follow up on that and I will also follow up with DEP rather than town council. Okay. 
as to yes, what the yeah. next step is to uh, okay. get their attention and or. Yeah, yeah. And you know, another well, thing. Actually, too, at this stage, maybe we should just give it to DEP because well, they're. If you're going to give it to DEP, you're going to have to give um, probably 97.9% of the lake to DEP, too, because everybody on that lake puts sand on their beach every year. And there's three houses before that house that they put sand in the water every year. I watched them do it. Started a trend because I'm not talking so much about the sand. I'm talking about building a wall and putting a pipe right into the, well, the, the lake. The, I know about the pipe because I told you that before. Because I the pipe went across the street and onto that into onto the shoreline when that old house was there. So where well, does the pipe I, come from? Where does the pipe it's, start? It's, it's just a drain. From where? From up, uh, up in the property. It just water, and water is permit. still there. It's a was that drain on the order of conditions that we approved for the dismantling of the house? I don't know. But the pipe was oh. there. It was under the road. Okay. And both ends of the pipe were exposed. All I, I see the... is one end of the pipe that bends down into the water. So it looks right. to it me is... like a new pipe. They might have replaced the pipe. But when they you start mucking around with the, the link, you ought to have a. All right, well, listen, I, I, I'm not going to argue with you about that, but if you're going to bring in one person on the lake, you better bring in them all. I'm going to bring in them all if they're going to be building walls right on the floor of the well, lake. The, the, the two neighbors just built a wall last year, two years ago. Damon, so, I think that's what the, the uh, Lake Association wants to do, too, is, is start changing the culture of what people can and can't do. All right. Oh, there's bald eagles there, too. Yeah. Well, and I mean, yeah. Well, I'm just saying is. It, it, there's one one violator that Pete is chasing down, but you, if you're going to chase them down, you're going to have to chase them all, Pete, because if you do it to one guy, everybody yeah. else would not do it either. All right. Yeah, one at a time. There should be yeah. some education about yeah. what you can and Walk can't do. Good thing we have someone on the link, Nitmuck Task Force, who can uh, get back to us on how the education process works. We meet works. Tuesday. I I so you got it on your calendar? You do. Okay. I'll be here for the rain garden in the morning and there for the uh, association meeting in the evening. Are you are you broadcasting the meeting on on Is there on for the rain garden? Where's it located? We're just trying to make it so I get sand, but we're trying to make it so it's fair for everybody on the lake. To be able to beautify their property, but the, you got one guy here and one guy five or six houses down. One guy here hasn't even taken an order of conditions out. And you got this guy who's jumping through hoops for six months before he can even start his project. And he's paid everything that he's had to do and gone through all the profit channels. And then you get this. And yes, I get it. People put sand in around the lake. I'm not opposed to that, but don't dig in the water with a bucket, with an excavator, and pull everything out of there unless you get permission from the right people. Okay. So, uh, uh, who? I'm, excuse me. Who? Uh, I didn't hear the name when they started talking. Who's this on the on the horn? This is Linda Lamont. And I am the vice president of the Lake Association. So okay. we're trying to get it all clarified as to what the rules are and who gets to play by them. Okay, who put so the wall? Who put the wall in, in front of your house? A long time ago, Damon. Okay. And who put the wall? Who put the sand in, 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 the, in the wall in front of Marty's house? A long time ago, Damon. The rules, the rules were the same a long time ago. I know because I had to put 20 fields of hay in front of my freaking house. Let's, let's try to keep it civil. Yes, I'm trying to keep it civil, but this is what I'm saying. It does not apply to everybody. You, uh, we got to cease and desist for putting up a little three corner fence. 20 fields of hay we had to buy and put out there. Is that fair? Where this guy's digging out the lake. And taking buckets out of the lake. Okay, I'll I'll redirect the meeting slightly. We do have a commitment where the Kong, uh Peter in particular, 
is going to reach out to our circuit writer, Mia, and find out what the next step is for getting uh, action taken on this particular step. Uh, Peter, I would ask that at the next meeting, you come back after having consulted with Mass CDP and say what are what the next piece of paper is that this commission generates. And if you can put me, you and me and, and her get together, make sure that if it's something that needs to be voted on and signed, that I have it printed out and I can bring it in and then we would we can go through that process. Peter, if all goes well, I'd like to be on the conversation with you because I'm going to be part of the Lake Association. I'd like to see what their take is on, on sanding and whatnot. Because from what I understood, 35 years ago, you couldn't sand your beaches because it was technically considered filling in the wetlands because the sand washes into the, into the lake. Well, so that's, that's the next conversation to have with Mass. Yes, there's a specific question, and then there's a larger education needs. Yes. yes. So you have yeah. people on the, the rules are still the same, Bob. You're not supposed to put sand in the lake. You're not supposed right. to put sand well, on the lake. So, okay. Uh, so, so one of the things that may happen as part of the outreach is that after you open up a conversation with me at, at Mass DEP, she can provide information and perhaps attend one of the future meetings this summer. Oh, I definitely will. Okay. Yeah. I just want to, I want to make sure that if you're going to do something like that invasive that everybody else on the lake is going to start following it's okay this guy didn't get in trouble so let's just keep going on with it well we'll see how how how, how the lake the lake association is able to monitor conditions on the shoreline and, and we shouldn't have to police everybody but i mean it's not fair for this one yes and then this one yep Okay, we shouldn't have to do that. And Bob is on your side with that particular approach. Right. Well, I want to make it clear. I believe everybody who's sitting at, on this board agrees with you. Right. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. And that's all I'm saying. Sure. And that's the goal right now, is to try and bring everything to a unified ability. If it's right for one, it's right for all, and if it's wrong for one, it should be wrong for all. Unless there's some sort of special condition, and that would be up to Mass DEP to decide. Any further discussion on, on the 10 old path? Okay, and we have a, an action item, and we're expecting to have further action on this next meeting. On the second. All right, uh, next action. 58 C Milford Street opportunity for discussion with Market Vincent and Bob Street about work done under the order of conditions for 58 C Milford Street. Uh, Bob, now is your time to move over to the other side of the table. Uh, Peg sent an email that she wasn't able to make it this evening, so we would be continuing the conversation with our next one. Do you want to? Say anything about the work that's been done and the order of conditions in this method slide. Or do you want to wait until next time? No, I, I can step down. I stepped down uh, in order to have this conversation. Um, the house is built, the grass is in. Go, go over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to place it in order to get some size of tape. Yeah. And it's not just, you know, uh, Peter and David have to do the same thing when they get it. No, come, come up where the microphone is. So. That's all right. Most exercise I have all day. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I just wanted to give an update to the board that the house is built, the grass is in, uh, grass is actually growing. Uh, so everything is stabilized. Everything is, is uh, in good shape. So I will be looking for a, um, a COC and um, there's one question about a pipe uh, that runs underneath the right of way and that pipe uh, on one of my original documents, one of my original plans, it says that pipe was going to be replaced 
only if necessary. Yes. The pipe is not broken, the pipe is still working, and I have pictures that show that everything that has to do with me, the pipe, and anything to do with the right of way is uh, undamaged, un, un, uh, untouched. So you're not replacing the pipe, so you don't, you're not disturbing the head and wall. So you can leave that as it is. Correct. Oh, well, I should be able to, because I'll cause more damage at this point than to do nothing. Right, and that was the big discussion because I was concerned about the wall and you were going to be replacing the pipe and I didn't see, and then there was talk about, well, sleeting the pipe. That works for me. It was just, I didn't want that wall biffed or if it right. biffed, it was, so right. if it doesn't get biffed, that should be even better. So now the only question that I have, and I have pictures, if if um, the the uh, abutters want to come in next week and have another conversation, that's fine. But I have pictures that show that we have a clay pipe. It's put in 1927, and it goes to a hole. That on the other side of that hole is a plastic pipe. So that plastic pipe was put in at a different time. The plastic pipe, the water is at the bottom of it. The clay pipe is eight inches under water. So the plastic pipe is holding the water back onto my foot. Because they didn't line up the pipes, you said. Correct. The elevation coming in is lower than the elevation you going out. out. That's a problem. Yes. Um, so here, let, me, let me go through the documentation we have on this. I'll present it again. This is the order of conditions that we issued, and under any special uh, special instructions, there were none required. Uh, I don't have a copy of the notice of intent yet. I asked for, and I couldn't find it on the SharePoint site, so I asked if you could pick up a copy of the order of conditions, sorry, the notice of intent documentation. Uh, and then the uh, minutes, they, they got, there was a lot of right. production. And so the minutes are here and on the site too. And so referring to those if you need to uh, do next meeting. Has a, has a complaint been made? Is that what? what, what why would those the neighbors the right of way? They don't like the right of way. And the telephone pool has that been resolved? Peg has expressed some concerns, but unfortunately, she sent the email that she was not able to make tonight's meeting. So Bob without, has already present, provided the documentation and wanted to give him an opportunity to say his side. That's why I started by saying, but we're not going to do anything until she's able to come in at a future meeting. Press her side. So the, the, the request is that we issue the certificate of compliance and I'm going to, since there is some time pressure, we're going to wait until the abutter has a chance to make it to us. Okay, any other, so did you, I'll, I'll let you, do anything further you wanted to say? No. Okay. So how do the pipes come together? They must meet somewhere halfway up or something? No, what happened is, it's the big, is a, it's the big basin. In the oh, the big basin, okay. The water pipe comes it's in is kind of like a system. The water pipe coming is down here, and the water pipe going up is up here. So the water accumulates and, and backs up onto this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you can come join us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, the last action is uh, 85 Millville Street possible encroachment. I still haven't done anything like that. And uh, so at some point, I should be able to find time to work with Medic on it and go out and talk. It, what is this? It, this is refresh my memory on this. The, this is uh, a butter using a little bit of open space for a volleyball net and uh, Medic on land service. It's, 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 when they go and review, they see that they've been cutting the open space to maintain more. And so space. Can and Mike, I, I can give it to you because I went and met with the with the homeowner last year. Uh -huh. uh, here, this is, is, is Cochran's Cochran. Cochran. old house. Here's, this, here's the situation. They own this parcel right here. Okay. They are mowing this section right here. Ask them politely to stop mowing and using this land. Whose, whose property is that? Where, where the where the cursor is? The green is uh, open oh. space. Oh. 
Met a good spot. Oh, no. They're not mowing that whole place. They no, are, they're just doing this part. No, no, they're not even. It's all rock. They're oh. they're mowing about a twenty by I don't know, maybe twenty by thirty area that has been grass for years. You know, since the house has been there, it's just a part of their lawn. And there's a oh. they, so I went and met with them. And it, this is the house right across the street from Boucher's house, the 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 the, the homestead, and I you know I said. You can't really mow there, and and you, and you can't put up. You, they had a volleyball net that they they put it up when the kids come over, and then they take it down and lean it against the tree net that's on their property. So they do play volleyball on the property, but they, they, I guess technically they're they're probably standing on town-owned property playing volleyball. And yeah, maybe they mowed a twenty by thirty area just to continue the grass to be all the same, and then it goes right into woods. Um, it's not a real big area. Granted, they are doing the wrong thing because Ann and Patrice don't, don't want them to do it. Um, and it's not their land, but it's grass that was probably their grass that they, they've been you know mowing since the 70s. Any further discussion? And what's the purpose of that all that green land? It's part of the conservation land that's the it's it's and the, the purpose to have open spaces make the beavers happen so this is where the beavers built their dams. For public recreation i wouldn't have a problem with uh, uh maybe if they came and asked permission to put up a volleyball court on part of the conservation area but then the general <laughs> public should be also able to use the yes same. i mean it's not a volleyball court like sand and it's it's one of those ones you buy at Walmart and you you bet. Is the general the public allowed yeah. to get go on to any of the properties? Yes, there are trails. You yes. see the red trails. And that green is the easement that we could to access. Yes. And one of the as opposed to having to go through the wetlands. And, and yes, and one of the, the questions is this is supposed well, to be public access along the stretch. That sounds like the thing to do is to make that a public access. It is. Clean it up and make it a public access. I think it's all a big, it's a big uh, pile of rock. Um, like it's a big, I don't know if it's ledge, Mike. I didn't really look into it that hard. But the problem is if they stopped mowing, like, okay. So I'll go back to that picture, Pete. Uh, I mean, uh, Carl. So zoom in a little bit. It's only the front corner they're cutting. Right? Yeah, it's just that little bit, like right there on that corner. Um, like see where the where the lot line angles to the to the left. Yeah, yeah. They're cutting they're, they're cutting like that little V there, and just because it probably was grass forever, it and if they didn't cut it, it probably wouldn't be a big deal um, to the to the uh, the people in charge. Um, but that's what they're that's the biggest complaint. But the volleyball net, you no, know, they didn't dig it all out and put a sand in there, and and they're not making. Uh, like some of the play, you know, it, it's not a professional volleyball court. It's just a little one. You bang the stake in here, and you bang the stake in there, and you play with one play. Where, uh, see where the cursor is now, Carl? Where, where the cursor's resting? What is that? What is that area? Is that? That's a right away. It doesn't show. That's the right, but it's right. all trees there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that yeah. trees? Correct. So it's not wide open. No. And then that's a that's a see where the 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 grass stops and the tree line starts there. That just goes up like a big hill. I mean, I can you get a street view from that, Carl? Uh, probably not. It's not Google. So it's that back area behind the trees there. Oh, right yeah, there. right. So, yeah, so I think you can see. Yeah, so it's just like that back corner. Is there, see that that tree right there? I think you can see the volleyball net leaning against the tree. 
um, but back in there a little bit. Yeah. So that that mowing that little area or that grass area right there. Here is the volleyball net. I think that's what it is. It's just wrapped up. The net's wrapped around the two poles and it's leaning against. And that's how it was when I got there that day. You know, I asked them not to mow it, but you know what? You know, we could put a sign up. Are they going to follow the sign? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Put a fence up, I guess. So the left of that box, put the sign to. That's the end. That's to the left. Yeah. Right. But we don't know where the property is because it takes it, it, it widens it out for maybe an access road. So I, I'm not sure all those pine trees are on their property, but they've assumed that they are and they use it as such. And to be honest with you, that's it's sort of like the Lake Nipmuc thing. One person does it, they all do it. This is open space that's owned by the land. It's the principle of it. It's town land. You, yes, you're in a butter. You're not supposed to cutting the tree, you cut the grass. It's not your land. It's town owned land. Yeah, I don't think they cut any trees. They didn't cut any trees. It was just that they, was mowing, they were mowing the grass and they played volleyball on it. The volleyball thing, as long as they didn't put anything permanent out there, I don't think that's an issue because it's town owned land. And if you can walk on it, why can't you kick, uh, hit a ball around on it? It's the cutting of the vegetation that. Uh, yeah, the, no, the grass. It's just grass. Cutting the grass. Vegetation. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Not I trees, not, not doing any stumping, not bringing excavators in. And I get it. It's not the right thing to do. But I've told, I told them, Ann's told them, the letter's been sent. Uh, you know, you want to put a sign up? They can walk by the sign just like the ATVs drive by them in the woods. Okay, any further discussion? All right, uh, that concludes the items that I listed. So your agenda, any other uh, activity that people wish to bring up? Before we adjourn the meeting, we're going to have a signing party. Over on the table, I laid out all of the things we need to sign tonight. Susan gets to take them and check through with the town email and get back to people and get them their version. Any in motion to adjourn? No, we're not oh, sorry. until after the end of the class. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kyle, you got enough signatures on that stuff, or do I need to stop at Town Hall? Yes, no, we, we have four people here in the, in the building. Okay. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, one, two. <laughs> No. So if you if you look through uh, the email because I was sending out emails this morning to to them saying, Yep, we got them. We're signing them tonight. Talk to Susan about getting your, your, yeah, your, I'll make your, copies. your wedding copy. So yeah, you can go copy them before you leave tonight. Yeah, we've got the copy. <laughs> I don't think you need a code back. It's not no, 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 I'm trying to get a computer to connect to right. the spot. You want a mustache? Think off. Oh, I've always gone with this. Okay. Every every couple of months, I trim it back until it's almost not there. But I leave the mustache. My wife has told me I have to have a beard if I'm going to have a mustache at the same time. Oh, is that right? Yes. Yes. She's very fussy though. Since I don't look, she looks at me far more often than I look at myself in the mirror. She gets a vote as, as to what I look. Uh, I did see did somebody express an interest. So, or do we have an uh, opening? Because the game is not. Yes, uh, that's the last I'm letter down. Yeah, I discussed that. Uh, the um, 
Well, it looks this is this is where they're just requesting us to do it. So Susan will have to reach out to them and either and either we prepare something, you know, Susan, or we ask their engineer to, to do the paperwork and then we sign it next time. That's just the request. It's not something the same here. It is because they sent that postal mail and I didn't get it until this, it didn't open it until this morning. Colonel, that's others from chat. Is that just you? Somebody maybe no, so, no, that the others from chat is a I don't know, upper user. user that owns the AV equipment in here. Oh, so the town hall upper meeting room owns the camera and the microphones. And the recording. Well, the town hall upper meeting room is user has the when, 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 when someone logs into Teams, it checks and says, okay, give me your microphone and give me your, your camera so that you can participate. The, since I'm not logging in as a person, I have to contact I log in as a person, but I don't have my own personal. I, I will be signing. This right here is the computer that I'm logging into. Mm -hmm. I don't have a computer, a microphone and camera assigned to this. Instead, we are using the camera and microphone that is owned by the fake user called Town Hall Upper Meetings. The advantage to this is that if we, when we meet across the street, then we get the fake user called yeah. station. Yeah. Do we have any questions? Yeah. I will, I will be talking another thing you missed because you go to like I'm going to reach out to the board of selectmen to see if they have uh if, if the candidates who expressed interest last fall are also still interested in whether we should be having another meeting with them. Uh, uh, this this woman wasn't able to make it tonight because she's out of town. She's not going to be able to make it in two weeks because it's her anniversary. No, I know that. Because uh, who was it? Was it Ron? Yes. Yeah. 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 Good. Another three years. Excellent. And then once we reconstitute the new board, everyone will have a select. Everyone will want to point it and you say, here's an it. I think so. Okay. Um, since we now have signatures, I'll entertain the motion to adjourn. So moved. Is it second? I'm second. Okay. Moving second. It all in favor. Oh, yeah. I am. Okay. Uh, he, 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 he